Jacob, unlike a lot of guys here who are transferred in, you've, you've lived this series. Uh, you've been in Knoxville your whole life. When you just hear Tennessee, Florida, what does it mean to you? Yeah, um, it means the world, man, because this is, this is what you come to the schools like this for, right? You come for these big rivalries, these big storied uh, matchups between teams. And um, I think it means a lot this year, too, because, you know, both programs have really good teams. You know, we're both ranked. Um, it's going to be a great matchup. Um, Obviously, they're coming here, and so it's going to be a great environment as far as, you know, just in the stadium and in the crowd and the fans and everything. So, um, you know, this is what you play SEC ball for is, is weekends like this. Um, I'm sure the, the sort of the temperature's up when you play this one the first time. What, how does it help if you've played it before, the second, the third times? How do you handle it better? Yeah, just um, understanding that the the crowd you know for us it'll be an advantage but the crowd doesn't matter right like the crowd is is the crowd if there's going to be noise there's going to be you know people talking about the game before the game there's going to be predictions there's going to be you know all these different things that everyone's saying about the game and about each team and you just kind of have to go into it as you know this is just another week uh, we just have to go into it and and try to focus on ourselves and prepare the right way and at the end of the day um you know you should be successful in whatever you do so Jacob, Coach just said that this game last year was a turning point for the team and the program. As a player, what was it about the game last year that changed the mindset and the approach for you guys in the locker room? Yeah, just the, um, the realization that, you know, a lot of the things that are causing us to not be successful are, are self-inflicted and can be – can be avoided, I guess, and, and just having that realization, you know, clicking on the film and seeing, like, on this play, it was the left tackle that messed up, and that's the reason. On this play, it was, you know, the running backs that were wrong in their keys or, or we're hurting ourselves because we're getting, you know, penalties on third down or, you know, having, having big drops on the perimeter or the quarterback's not reading the right thing, left or right, whatever it may be, and um, just coming to that realization that, like, man, like, we're killing ourselves, we're shooting ourselves in the foot. Um, and if we're able to, to lock in, like I talked about earlier, the preparation piece and, and being ready for the game, truly mentally and physically ready for the game, uh, we'll give ourselves a much better chance to win. And, and we're able to take that into the next few weeks of the season and, and carry that into this season as well. Jacob, were there a couple of other takeaways from the game? Obviously, the score got out of hand. Mm -hmm. But what were some of your takeaways about your offense uh, on Saturday? Uh, this, past sat this past Saturday? Um, yeah, I think, uh, so I've heard it a lot, people saying that like we came out slow, right? And we came out kind of lagging. We didn't score the first drive and then put together six scoring drives in a row. Um, and like it might have seemed weird just because, you know, you know, we, we, we weren't up 28 to zero in the first quarter. And I think that it's good because we kind of raised that bar, right? We've raised the bar f um, from people expecting us to, you know, maybe score 20 something points in a game to now people are expecting us to score 20 something points in a quarter. And so, um, yeah, just go out there and, and you find your groove. And, and we talked about it. We watched the film and broke it down. And, and there's some mistakes that, you know, again, it'll be all, all over the field. It's not just one position group, but um, something here and there where all 11 guys aren't, aren't executing at, at the highest level. And um, obviously, again, found our groove and we're able to kind of, you know, put that one away. But, um, you know, against really good teams, and, and Akron was a good team, but against teams that, you know, we want to compete against for, for championships. Um, those things are going to have to be really clean going into the week, starting off the game. Jacob, just when you look back at last year, uh, last year's game, and then mm -hmm. kind of compare it to this year's game, three, four games into Josh Heupel, and now 16, 17 games in, what would you say is the biggest difference going into this year's game compared to last year? Um, just knowing ourselves, man, knowing um, that we can have confidence in our abilities, can have confidence in the coaching staff. Um, like, it's, it's weird. Like, I don't remember a whole lot, you know, from last season, like, details wise, just because. You know, we're in such a mentality like this, I won't call it a profession, but what we do is, is very much, you know, focused on the next week, focused on the next week. And, and so you kind of live that way and then you forget about the details, right? And he asked me earlier about the game and I was trying to think of the de like what actually happened in the game, right? But um, man, just going into this game this year, just being able to, to trust the plan that, that's going in um, from the coaches. 
um, understanding that, you know, on third down, I know exactly, maybe not exactly, but I, I have a pretty good idea of where, where Golish is going with the ball or, or where, where Hype wants to do with the ball in um, certain situations, certain down distance. So um, just a better understanding of our offense and what we're trying to get accomplished. Jacob, as you sort of think about the, the running game each of the first three games this season or so far this season overall, how, how would you grade the running game performance this season? What, what are some things that you've liked from the running game and what things you think need to be maybe a little more consistent? Um, I think some things that I liked is just I'm able to see our, our backs um, just hitting it, right? Third down, third and one, um, whereas last year you might have some young guys that, that you know, might – not just trust it and just really go get that one yard. And I've seen our guys step up and truly put their head down and go get that yard for us so that we can continue our drives and, and go put points on the board. So running back wise, I think that's one big um, improvement that they've made. I think on the front, um, just being super clear in our, in our IDs and, our, and who the line's working to, who the tight end's working to, and, and being on the same page you know, from the sideline to the field, whenever they make adjustments, just being able to say, all right, we're no longer double teaming to this guy. Let's double team to that guy, and let's, let's get it all figured out. So, Jacob, growing up here, you obviously have a close-up pers perspective. Um, you know, when it comes to rivalries, w w what's your perception of you know, who, who's Tennessee's top rival and, and where does Florida kind of rank in that conversation? Obviously, yeah, Florida's up there. I think Florida, um, there's a lot of games that, you know, you can win and people not say much about, but you know this game and, and the games against other SEC competition are going to be the ones that people care about and the ones that people talk about the most. And so, um, yeah, all the other stuff kind of gets pushed aside, and it's all right. How do you go out there and perform against these guys? And so, um, it'll be a big test and it'll be a good matchup. And I think, like you said, it's a big game just because of the the, the history and um, how it's gone the past you know few years here, and wanting to turn that around and, and get this place where where it should be. Jacob, a couple of questions. The last two weeks, you and Princeton have both had big plays on that, like a, I guess, pop pass, whatever you want to call it, where you guys kind of slip out. What's the key to making that play work for, from your guys' perspective? I mean, just it honestly being on the right, the right timing, right? Just understanding the defense and understanding, you know, where their safeties are playing, I guess, and, and you know, them kind of keying in on whatever they, the defense has going on and then being able to capitalize on those is really all it is. And, and for you, you, you talked about sort of the noise and all the talk about this game there's going to be during this week. Do you, as one of the leaders on the team, do you, you have to sit some of the other guys down and say, hey, we got to stay focused, or you do it by example? How do you sort of set the tone this week? Yeah, I think um, – I don't think it's been that big of an issue for us um, on the team, but I think the coaching staff does a really good job of emphasizing, like, like man, it, it truly, like, doesn't matter. Please don't be on – if you're on Twitter – if you can handle it, if you can look at all that stuff and read what people are saying about your team and about you and about the predictions, if you can handle it mature, like in a mature way and understand that you know, it's just people talking, just people saying whatever, then uh, sure, whatever. You're, you're like, look at it, you're, you're good, whatever. Maybe use it as motivation to go and be like, prove somebody wrong or whatever it may be. Um, but at the end of the day, it's just a matter of being mature about just understanding that everything is out there and it, it has nothing to do with, with what we've got going on and with what we're able to put out there on Saturdays. So, ben. Jacob, you're more aware of the rivalry because you're from here and, and grew up within the rivalry. Do you believe in that there's a mental hurdle that, that you all as a team have to overcome on Saturday on top of just executing just because of how the, the series has gone the last 10, 15 years? Sure, yeah. I think. Um, I guess mental hurdle is a good way to put it. You kind of have to, to put the, the past, for me, it's been the past four seasons, right? The past four seasons behind you and just be like, you know, every year we go into the game thinking you're going to win the game, right? Like you don't go into a game being like, ah, oh, man, like it's, it's Florida again, it's Alabama again, it's, it's Georgia. Like let's, let's just try to go and like not lose, right? Like no, everyone, you genuinely, as a competitor, want to go in the game and win the game. And so, um, Obviously, like I mentioned earlier, like you have a snap and clear mentality, like it's all about the next. And so you can't, can't really think about last year or the years prior and just trying to go out there and, and win this one. With, again, with your knowledge of the series, when Hinden came in last year, that was his first kind of big start. Mm -hmm. um, did, do you recall any conversations you had with Hinden about the Florida series, about what that game meant a year ago? Um, I mean, I don't really recall anything. Hinden is um, Hinden's an older guy. Hendon's played in big games. Hendon has started in big games. And 
um, he understood the magnitude of, of the rivalry just because, I mean, I think a lot of people around college football understand whether he was, you know, he wasn't at Tennessee, but I'm sure he'd probably heard of, of Tennessee, Florida and how big of a deal it was. And um, he's the same way, you know, you ask him, it's just another week, right? It's just another week that we go out, got to go out there and prepare and, and get ready to play our best. So at the end of the day, if we're all doing that, you know, we should be just fine. Thanks, Jacob. Cool. Thank you.